Welcome back everyone to my channel. Um, for this tutorial we're going to be doing some altered paper clips and this is basically creating something beautiful out of scraps. So here's one of them and <clears throat> here's another one and I use the placemat that was left over from my project Saturday night along with some other scraps. This is the doily that was left over. This is a leftover piece of a trim, another leftover piece of a trim, some buttons. So that's that one. <clears throat> this one's using a rustic, rusty uh, paper clip. And basically, what I do is I take, let me see if I got my bottle here. In this bottle, I have a mixture that I um, have about 16 ounces of hydrogen peroxide, about a cup of vinegar, and a three-quarter cup of uh, coarse sea salt. Mix it together, and I buy some paper clips, nails, or whatever, and I spray it down. If it's galvanized, you might have to take a wool pad and kind of um, rub it on just to get some of that galvanized metal off and then spray it and then leave it out in the sun to bake. Typically takes about an hour sometimes it might take a little bit longer. Um, I just do it in the batches. I'm going to take an old tin foiled one of those um, disposable ones throw it all in there spray it leave it in the sun and then it's ready for me to use on projects. Um, so here's one again leftover everything is leftover scraps of something and here's one and I use this little charm was give, gifted to me by Miss Judy Dominguez again with the exception of the ephemeras everything is scraps <clears throat> here's one it's a little bit manly again this is a piece of canvas left over from our project and I just kind of threw everything together some ephemeras and um, did that one Here's leftovers again, all leftovers, some eyelash trim, I button, and I stamped in the word love. More leftovers. Oops. So it's a cute way of creating some cute little embellishments for your junk journals, your albums, or even your books. Because the neat thing about these is that, believe it or not, this is a embellishment that I had done a couple years ago. I yanked it off another project that um, I wasn't using anymore. I put a button and I just kind of, this is leftover from Saturday night, threw it together and made this one. The neat thing about these is that we can um, put them on our journal pages or even books. And I like the way these fit better. I've done other um, paper clip but I like the way these fit because you can slide them in a lot better than you would with another type see so even with like my Bible if I wanted to bookmark where I'm reading I can use these so that is a perfect way of using it as well <clears throat> oops my Bible kind of did not want to leave my desk okay and then um, again, here's another one. Scraps and very simple to make. So to create these, again, like I said, you want to um, get as much stuff that you have laying around. I try to prep everything up and I go around and I sew. Now you don't have to be a perfect seamstress or sewer or anything like that. I'm not, and I've told you guys that many, many times. I am not good with a sewing machine. I The only thing I know how to do is sew on paper and it's not perfectly stitched or aligned and that's what I like about it being funky and that's just how I am funky in that sense that I'm normally very particular about things being straight but when it comes to sewing I know that this girl can't stitch really well and so I'm not too concerned and I actually like the funkiness of, of the improper stitching and it just gives it character so I do like that so I kinda get those all prepped up that way I have like a little bit of an assembly line going on um, and here's another way 
but you can use this. This is a little tab folder that I made, see? And it just makes it a lot easier than having to cover the paper clip um, the other way. And I've done it the other way, but this is just, to me, it's a lot easier. So you can just use random, I have some of these ready, random pieces of stuff. This is what I used. And I purchased this at Hobby Lobby in their bolt sale. And I thought, you know, this will be really good um, to do this. And I also used leftover pieces of canvas from projects because it's nice and sturdy. Now, for this one, what I did is I cut one of these off, just like so, and I'll do one. And I know that my paper clip is a certain length, and it has to be able to fit within that length, right? So this was, of course, obviously big. And you want some jumbo paper clips. Uh, and you can get these at Office Max, Office, Office Depot, Staples. Walmart has the ones that are covered in plastic, and I don't really like those. And uh, I prefer these because I can make these rusty with the solution, or I can just do some chalk painting on it. And what I've done in the past, I also, in one of my old channels, I wrapped some seam binding and sorry ribbon to decorate the paper clip a little um, and I also applied chalk paint and I like these because of that it gives you a more versatile way of working with it um, so what I did is I trimmed up and this is like a canvas type ribbon and it made it a lot better for fraying and I like that look Now these scraps here, you don't want to throw those away because if, even though this side here has that um, stitch that protects it from terrain, um, you can trim that off and use the rest for other grungy work. So we save that. Then you're going to take and fray it. Now keep in mind, all that free stuff, it's reusable, which is what I did on this. This is all that free stuff, okay? So save that because you're gonna use it. Now, here's one already done. I stitch, I fold it just about a, an inch, three quarter of an inch, and I use the paper clip as a guide. I line my foot of the sewing machine pedal right around there and I stitched it. And that's all you do there. You can fray the bottom. You can cut it at an angle. Do whatever you want. This is your paper clip, guys. <clears throat> I like this uh, glue mat. However, what I don't like is that everything. I don't have um, my old, um, what do you call it, lint roller. So i got to get one this week. And that helps with the lint. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead, since I have this one already done, I'm going to show you how I get the paper clip curled. Now, I got this idea. There's tons and tons of video tutorials out there, and everyone's uh, all trained paper clips now. Um, but I got my idea from Mrs. Clog. And what you're going to do is you're going to open it up, just like so. You're going to take your round nose plier, and you're going to flush it right to the edge. And then you're just going to curl it completely around till you get that. Then you're going to take your round nose plier, stick it in there, just like so. And you're going to curl it again, like so. And it, it's not always going to be the same. And then I take it on the outside of the, the loop and kind of bend that neck a little. And... They're not always going to look the same. And then you get a funkiness like that. See? And all the ones I've done, they're all different. Oops. So 
So that one, there's a little smaller one. I kind of bend, I like the look of the bending of the neck. Um, they're all different. So entirely up to you how you want to do them. So that's all you do with that. Doesn't have to be a perfect round shape. Don't sweat over it, okay? Now, um, now that I have this one done, what I do is I take one of the, the paper clips um, at the bottom. I kind of put it in. Insert it. Give it about an inch or so, pending half an inch if you want to be stingy. Um, and just run it through your sewing machine and give it a good lock stitch right there. And again, it doesn't have to be, I gotta get to some of this off, guys doesn't have to be super 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 duper perfect then grab the image that you want we're gonna go with this little girl I think she's cute and darling and any leftover pieces of scraps is perfect for this so here's leftover from the other night we're just gonna play with that now I'm gonna probably coffee dye a little bit this so I got some coffee dye here get some um, paper, paper towel down so I'm not so it's not crispy white you know You can use any scraps, all the scraps. I try to save all my scraps in a container. Um, and then I use whatever scraps I have. I try to use all these little scraps because they're so useful um, for these little projects. do it off do it off centered whatever you want um, here's another piece of lace and it's kind of funky and gringy here's um, a piece of a doily left over from one of our projects that we've done recently did I tear that up? I think I did I don't feel it there it is. I knew I didn't. Okay. So this perfect little leftover stuff. It's great for this kind of these kind of projects. And I like the frayed look of that, so I'm probably going to use that on the outside like so. I don't mind that little staggering piece like so. Put that there. It doesn't have to be perfectly centered. Um, and that's the neat thing about this. It doesn't have to be perfectly centered. <clears throat> and I can make a little tiny bow, which is what I've been doing with these. I thought they were great for that. And I'm just going to probably twist it. Use that little staggering piece to tie it there. Go ahead and lay it here. Okay, grab this one that has that frayed piece. Once you have that, you want to put your image in and just kind of figure, get a feel of how you want this whole stuff to go. 
Like I have this here from leftover from the other night. I could probably stagger it down there. I have more of this leftover. I love this stuff. I have to see if I can get more. So I could probably tuck some of this here as well. Let's see what else. I got this little leftover from the other nine. I could probably tuck it in here somewhere. Put that one there. That's so. I'm going to coffee dye that one a little. Just a little bit. So it's not so freshly new. And you can also use your Tim Holtz ink pad. Um, if you want, get a little bit of quick. I'm going to do that. Get a little bit of a kick. Wait, wait on my mat. I didn't want to do that. This kind of gives it a more vintage look that I want to go for. Okay. Let's distress this while we're here with Tim Holtz. Again, I have the staggering pieces of thread lingering, and I like that look. So it's a personal preference. You don't have to do that by all means. And you don't have to uh, sew oddly crazy like I do. I like that. Once you have a good feel of how you want, you want to try to compose and put everything glued together down. And you can use um, Fabri-Tac, hot glue, whatever you feel uh, works for you. Go for it. These are just my personal preference, but I'm sure you guys have your own personal preference as far as glue. Everyone has a personal preference when it comes to glue. All have our personal preference. And that one was uh, about so. Again, I like the look of it. Somewhat staggering on the side, lingering out like it's out in the limbo. And you can, once you have everything, you can go back in and kind of get the pieces that are, um, that needs to be tacked down better with glue. In the meantime, you can just do it however so. I'm going to put that there. I'm going to put a little bit more funkiness over here. Just because I want to. Just because I want to. It's just a because, 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 okay? Put that there. I know what, yeah, I like that. So now we can glue this down. And just like so, we have our little crazy bow. Not so pretty, but it is a funky bow, and I like funky bows. I'm not... And I got another one here, so we can put those two together to make one. So I'm 
just going to put one on top of the other, off centered. And then here, I said I was going to put this little extra piece of trim that I had left over from the other night. And then I have this that I was going to put there. So we're going to go ahead and lay that one down. Oh, you're backwards, dude. What are you doing? Doesn't have to be so perfect. Um, if you're going for elegance, then I highly recommend that this is not the video for you because um, although I find it elegantly beautiful, arts and beauty, it's an eye of the beholder, right? And so it is what we want to call it. And I think this is beautiful. And I can probably trim this one just a tad bit. And again, use that for something else. And I take these little staggering piece of frayed thread. And you can shrivel it up. You know, funky ways, however ways. Attach it there. Grab yourself a button. Your nails become a magnetic force for, um, and I like threading them and leaving that thread that's wonky right there just like so. I'm not too concerned about whether one tail is longer than the other. I like the funkiness, guys. I really do. That is why I love these kind of projects because um, it's just funky. And the funkier, the better. Now I'm just going to tie it down, down here, just like that. And I'm going to grab another button. And I'm just going to tie it so that it comes down, like so. And I think that is a perfect little way of using your scraps. It's a funky, it's um, not meant to be perfect, and if you're going for perfection, this is not the kind of project that I recommend for you. Um, but I like the funkiness, and I like to be able to use these scraps um, and give it a new purpose. So that is the tutorial for today, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Down here, what you can do is you can, you know, take some small stamps and type in a word or stamp in a word. Um, you can also um, add more buttons here, whatever you want. You don't have to fill the whole thing up. You can leave it as so. I can also take, you know, let's see. Oh, that's pretty. See, I can also do that. So it's just filling up a piece of canvas like any other canvas and creating these little unique bookmarks with paper clips and using up your scraps. So, there you have it. Pretty, huh? Anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Till next time, bye-bye.